welcome to Only Connect, the quiz that combines fiendish detective work with light entertainment. It's like Sherlock Holmes playing Give Us a Clue. I met Eunice Stubbs once in a restaurant. But enough of my fabulous theatrical anecdotes. Let's meet the teams. On my right, Henry Patinez, a committed bibliophile who draws lines through dots for a living and has worn the same shirt for every one of his Only Connect appearances. Nick Mills, a software tester who owns over 2,000 books and is in the 10th year of a long-distance relationship. And their captain, Stephen Pearson, a librarian who was taught PE by Ewan McGregor's father and met his wife after she sent a congratulatory email when he won a radio quiz. United by a soft spot for strategy, they are the chessmen. Stephen, you beat the Gallifreyans in the quarterfinal and he are in the semi-final. What's been the secret of your success so far? Oh, I think probably accentuating the positive and eliminating the negative. That's the spirit. You are trying to eliminate tonight, on my left, Rob Hanna, a native Liverpudlian who once abseiled down Canning Street Police Station and recently adopted a Nene Goose. Craig Element, a keen bridge player who once barged into Sophie Ellis Bexter on live television. And their captain, Gareth Kingston, a marketing manager who, in 2006, spotted a former Secretary General of the UN in a shopping centre. Like Jethro Tull, they are living in the past. They are the history boys. Gareth, you beat the linguists in your quarterfinal. Mm -hmm. What's been the secret to your team's success? I think we've prepared quite well. I think we've been very good at analysing where we could improve and we've had luck and ridden it. Well, both teams have done brilliantly to reach the semi-final, but only one of them can make the final. We will decide that by playing a quiz and looking at who's got more points at the end. History boys, you won the toss, so you'll be going first. Please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. Could we have the lion, please? The lion. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. PHP, PHP. Well, this is a competing language, is it? Um, do we want to go next? Next, please. Use not Unix. Are these camp campaigns? GMU's not Unix. Um, this is it's computing related anyway. Yeah, 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 definitely. Should we go next? Next, please. The TTP project. I don't that? know what that is. Um, it's, it's, it's all computer related. It is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a computer campaign. Hypertext preprocessor. It's open source. Next, please. Wine is not an emulator. Are these campaigns? Um, let's do with computing languages. Three yeah. seconds. This is to do with computer programming and campaigns. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, chessmen, you have the chance of a bonus point. Well, uh, Henry tells me it's either a, called a recursive acronym or a backronym. They are recursive acronyms. Henry, what do I mean by that? It's using the word GNU as part of the acronym. So, anyway, uh, uh, that's how I would describe it. <laughs> that's right. If you look at the words, they almost spell themselves. PHP. Those are the opening letters of PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. GNU, GNU, GNU is not Unix. They are mostly computer languages. The TTP project is something in the Dilbert cartoon. Uh, Dilbert is asked, would you like to join the TTP project? And he says, maybe, what does it stand for? And they say, TTP stands for the TTP project. <laughs> Recursive mm, acronyms. Cool. Well spotted. So you get the bonus point, and it's your turn to choose a question. Horned Viper, please. The Horned Viper. These are going to be picture clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Um, I don't know who that is. It's a guitarist. But beyond that, no. okay. uh, next, please. VHS. Or possibly Vitamax? No, no, no it's that's VHS. not Vitamax. Okay. Uh, next, uh, next, please. Oh, uh, I've seen that somewhere. But, I mean, is it just a volume it's thing volume, on the... Yeah, next. Uh, next, please. Go. Uh, ready, set, go, or something. But it shouldn't be a sequence. Oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's Ludo or Pochise or something. Uh, um, and what does that Or play. Does it all just mean play? Three yeah. seconds. Um, Ludo. Uh, play. Play is not the answer, I'm afraid. So, History Boys, you have a bonus chance now. Um, uh, they all have the word muse related to them. They do not. And that's not Muse in the first picture, it's Placebo. It's ah. Brian Molko, the lead singer of Placebo, taking its name from the Latin for I will please. Video, Latin for I see. Audio, I hear. And you recognised Ludo, which does mean I play. 
They all take their names from first-person Latin verbs. So no points there, but history boys, you've got the chance with another question. Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. What is the connection between these fiendish little clues? Here's the first. Lanthan eyes, well, this is, yeah. Next, please. Gaelic football team, how many players? How many players on our Gaelic football team? 15 or 18. Should we go next? Yeah, I think so. Next, please. Men's Security Council, how many people in the European Security Council? 15, isn't it? 15, should we go? Yeah, I think it's 15. 15. They all have 15 members. Well deduced. You didn't need to see the Scottish jury in a trial. There'd be 15 of those. What can you tell me about the first clue? Uh, there are 15 lanthanides on the periodic table. That's right. They're consecutive elements from lanthanum to lutetium. Mm -hmm. 15 consecutive elements known as the lanthanides. You get 15 players on a Gaelic football team, not played very widely, mostly in Ireland and America. And the UN Security Council also has 15 members. Well done. Chessmen, your turn for a question. Uh, water, please. Water. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. S-P-A-R. Should we go? Yeah, what that means. Next, please. Oh, no, is it? It's Aldi. Spa Aldi. So they're all discount supermarkets in Germany. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, German discount or Well, dis yeah, discount. Who become acronyms? <laughs> well, they're discount supermarkets, and do you want any more than that? <laughs> they are all supermarkets. Whether they're discount supermarkets, I suppose they all offer discounts yeah, yeah. from time yeah. to time, but they are all supermarkets. You spotted Spa and Aldi. You didn't need to see Asquith and Dairies, which would be Asda, or TE Stockwell and Cohen Tesco. They are all supermarkets. Well done. Back to you, History Boys, for a choice. Twisted Flax, please. The Twisted Flax. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Boulevard and punishment, do we know? Next, please. Pamela Suto and Pamela. So these are things in related to a novel, uh, something that can have in common these particular things. Should we go next? Next, please. Mr. Wickham's regiment. Uh, is, it, is it something afoot? I don't know. Regiment afoot. Um, should we go next? Next, please. The year, Treasure Island. Uh, it's going to be some. Um, is it chapters or class in chapters? What's the year in Treasure Island? Yeah, what year is Treasure Island? Uh, I don't know. It, oh, is it the same number? Yeah. Oh, well, it will be. Um, Three seconds. Fourteen. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, chessmen, you have the chance of a bonus point. Uh, well, it's not named. I think they just refer to it as the regiment. Um, they're, they're, so, they're just called yeah. the regiment, the year, the suitor and the boulevard? I'm afraid in a semi-final, and because it's a bonus point, I'm not going to accept that answer. They do have names, but the names are blanked out and represented by a line. The Boulevard in Crime and Punishment, you've got the letter K and then an underline, K underline Boulevard. Pamela's suitor in Pamela is Mr B underline. Mr Wickham's regiment is the Blankshire Regiment. And Treasure Island, I take up my pen in this year of grace, 17, underline. So it's all cases where actually a line represents something missing, which they would put into books to give a sense of greater realism, as though this is a real thing that I can't tell you, or I suppose if they were trying to avoid a libel. So not just no name, but a name that's hidden from the reader. So no bonus, but you may have the last question of the round, the two reads. The music question, of course. Don't look too surprised. We haven't had it yet, yes. and we must. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Dividends? Uh, so it's probably the, could be the instrument. Some kind of pipes. Yes. Mm. Next. Uh, next, please. In 1814, we took a little trip. This is Lonnie Donegan. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Yes. Is it? Yes. Or is it the Battle of New Orleans? Oh, it's Battle of New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, next, please. Oh, I know this one. This is um, yes, isn't it? Next, next, next. Uh, next, please. Give me talk about the man of Gideon. Give me talk about the man of soul. There's none like old Joshua at the Battle of. It must be battles. Battle of New Orleans. Uh, battles or conflict of some kind, anyway. Battles is fine. They're all the battle of something. We heard the chieftains with Battle of Ochrim, the Battle of New Orleans, Lonnie Donegan, the Battle of Evermore, Led Zeppelin, and who was singing Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho at the end? I don't know. <laughs> it was the great Paul Robeson. But battles is indeed the connection. 
At the end of round one, the history boys have two points, the chess men have five. Round two is the sequences round. The teams may see a maximum of three clues and they must tell me what would come fourth. History boys, you'll be going first again. Please choose a hieroglyph. I should go for the lion once again, please. The lion. You will be seeing the first in a sequence. I would like to know what sort of thing you'd expect to come fourth. Here's the first. Starting to develop in this seven dashes. Um, should we move on? Next, please. Upward movement. Is this, this, is this the life cycle of, of, a, of a, um, a seed or something? Um, so it could be, well, I think it could be a word meaning starting to develop with seven letters and take one letter off. Okay, okay. Uh, next, please. Smell, smell. Upward movement, rise. Are these touch tastes? Smell. smell. Three seconds. I wouldn't sell. Um, to see. With four. Four. Dashes. Dashes under this. Not an answer that fits the sequence, I'm afraid. So, chessmen, another bonus chance. Uh, French, for, French for 100, open brackets, dash, 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 close brackets. Is an acceptable answer. We went with small coin and four dashes. What's the reason? Uh, because the first word is nascent. Uh, then you take the initial N off and you get ascent, and then you take the initial A off to get sent, and then you take the initial S off to get... Sent, spelt a different way. That's or even exactly song, right. As we, said it. <laughs> we started with nascent each time, took a letter off the beginning to end up with C E N T, for example, a small coin or the French for 100. So you get the bonus chess men, and it's your choice. Uh, horned viper, please. The horned viper. These are pictures of sorts. I'd like you to describe what the fourth picture would look like. Here's the first. Oh, oh God. God. This is three, two, one. Uh, what's, what are they? Are they? Uh, it's, it's, the kinds of it's the kinds of plastics. I don't know. Is it well, well, we, well, well, yeah, yeah, we need to see the rest. Oh, yeah. the next one. Uh, next, please. Uh, go to the next one. Next, uh, next please. Would be PTFE. One um, PTFE. Or is it P T? Or P. Oh, oh. Um, okay, which do you, which do you think? PET. Uh, what is that? Polyethylene terephthalate. And then uh, PTFE. P-E-T, one P-E-T. Uh, one P-E-T, or one with the arrows going round it and then P-E-T under it. One in a triangle of arrows with P-E-T underneath is the right <laughs> answer. I think you spotted that at clue one, didn't you, Henry? Yeah, well... We didn't know what it was going to be. We just knew it approximately be, what it was going to be. <laughs> well, what it turned out to be is plastic recycling code. So LDPE, that's for low-density polyethylene, and then PVC, everyone's familiar with that. At least my neighbours seem to be. HDPE, that's high-density polyethylene, and what is represented in the last picture? Uh, polyethylene terephthalate. Exactly so. And uh, you need to keep an eye on these when you're putting things in the recycling because you can't put them all in there. Very well calculated. Back to you, history boys, for a question. Two reads, please. Two reads. Now, this is going to be a music sequence, so I want to know what sort of thing you'd expect to hear in fourth place. Here's the first. Next, please. It sounds like some, it sounds like, I don't know, some growing connection. Next, please. This is something a nocturne, maybe, and um, it sounds like it could be thing through the day. Um, A nocturne of some type. Be more specific. Like moonlight sonata. So, like moonlight sonata, something that's related to the evening or night time. Not the right answer, I'm afraid. So, chessmen, you have the chance of a bonus point. Well, our best guess is that it would have to be something like a double bass concerto, but we don't know if anybody's written one, but we'll say a double bass concerto. I will accept a double bass concerto. You're thinking perhaps of the concerto for double bass by Kuzovitsky. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. That's, that's right, yeah, yes. 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 We heard Brahms' Violin Concerto in D major, Bartok's Concerto for Viola, Elgar's Cello Concerto in E minor. The stringed instruments are getting bigger, so I wanted to hear a concerto for double bass. Mm -hmm. 
Sadly, in the music sequences, we don't get to hear the last clue, but uh, I think we all know Kuzovitsky's Concerto for Double Bass. So, one, two, three. <laughs> That's about the gist. Very nicely played. Chessmen, you get that bonus, and it's your choice. Uh, water, please. Water. What would be fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Oh, that's, is that lyrics? No, it's, um, uh, it's uh, Talking Heads. Uh, you were living in a shotgun oh, yeah. shack. As the days go by... Next, please. You could be living in another part of the world. Oh, so is this going backwards or forwards? I can't, I, I can't remember. Uh, OK, next, please. Uh, is it my might find myself? Behind the wheel of a large automobile. You know Oh, God. <laughs> I don't want to start singing yet. <laughs> find myself. You might find yourself on the wheel of a large automobile. Three seconds. Nice. <laughs> uh, I need an answer. In a, in a strange... Is it strange town? Is yes. It, is it a strange town? Not the answer, I'm afraid. So a bonus chance of the History Boys now. With a beautiful wife? Yeah. With a beautiful wife? Not the answer, I'm afraid. Ah, you jumped a bit. Ah. A beautiful house. Oh. It is the opening lyrics of the Talking Heads song, Once in a Lifetime, and you might find yourself in a shotgun shack, you might find yourself in another part of the world, behind the wheel of a large automobile, and the next thing you might find yourself in is a beautiful house with a beautiful wife. But the house comes first. So close, but no bonus for you, History Boys. You may, however, have the last choice of the round. I have horse, please. The Eye of Horus. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Three hundred Diocletian and Maximian. Um, should we go next? Let's go on four, five, six hundred. Next, please. Septimius Severus. Zero. 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 Um, it would be. Would it be Augustus? When, when Jesus was born, was it Augustus? Um, because, because it was all Tiberius. Um, it was Augustus, was it? I thought it was Augustus, but I'm not certain. Well, Shall we go for it? Well, the next clue's not going to help. That's not yeah. going to help us in the yeah. Zero, Augustus. Coming in after two clues, I will give you three points. Really, you should have said 1 BC, Augustus, because there no, isn't really zero, a zero. Yeah. <laughs> OK, yes. Yeah, but you're right, we're going okay. back, as I think you know, mm -hmm. 100 years each time and looking for the names of... Uh, Roman emperors. That's right. And in the year 300, there were two, Diocletian mm. and Maximian. They sort of split mm. it up, the empire, between themselves. 200, it was Septimius Severus. 100, mm. Trajan. And in what some people call the year naught, but... I, I would. Correctly, Being 1 BC, <laughs> the emperor Augustus. Yes. Do you know what uh, Septimius Severus's advice to his sons was? Don't know. Very good advice. Polonius is often quoted. Not enough people quote Septimius Severus. His advice was, be harmonious, enrich the soldiers, and scorn all other men. Mm. That's the spirit. <laughs> Back to you, chessmen, for the last question. The twisted flax. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Yeah. Is it things you walk down in that song? I don't even walk down. down. Well, well, yeah, 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 next, next, please. Oh, no. no, probably not. <laughs> Should we go next? Mm, next, uh, next, please. Oh, it's the well, it's Port is... It's somewhere in the Channel Islands, isn't it? Is that the capital of Jersey? Mm. Is, that the, is that the capital of Jersey? Because I leave the capitals of... No, it's Guernsey. Okay, so, so, so it's so it St. Helier, then. Is it the capital of ascending... So is it St. Helier is the capital of... Is it the biggest one? Yeah, is that the best one? St. Helier? The answer is St. Helier. You were debating whether or not these were capitals of the Channel Islands. Mm. Well, the first one, Sark, doesn't actually have a capital. The avenue mm. is the largest settlement. Ah. So the largest mm. settlements on the Channel Islands in increasing order of the size of Ireland, with the biggest island, Jersey, at the end, and its capital, St Helier. So at the end of round two, the History Boys have five points, the Chessmen have 11. I think it's time for a horrible semi-final connecting wall. Chessmen, you'll be going first this time. You've got the choice, lion or water. Which would you like? Uh, water, please. OK, you have two and a half minutes to solve the water wall. Starting now. Uh, Asher, oh, hang on. There's Benjamin, Joseph, Sim Simeon, Gad, Asher. I think those are the only sons of Joseph yes. there. So there's Asher, Benjamin, Simeon, Gad, miss out Joseph. Asher, Benjamin, Simeon, Joseph, miss out Gad, miss out Simeon. 
Oh, okay, so there are mountains. Logan K2, Kenya, and Oyas de Salado are all mountains. Oh, so, so and I, K2, I, Mount Kenya, and Logan, are there any mother? That could be a mountain, perhaps, some of them. We'll try. Get, get, get it. So it's, what is it? K2, Two, Logan, Mount Kenya, and Oyas. So we've missed, mm -hmm. so we tried that four. If we, we think it might be that. So, so, no, but let's assume that might be a mountain. So if we've missed out that one, we'll miss out that one. Miss out that one. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Um, Three strikes and you're out now. Than, it must be Pope Leon the Ninth. Perhaps they didn't or really exist because I can't see enough popes there. Oh, Eurovision Song Contest winners. Johnny Logan. Diana Diana International. Win. No, not Donna International. Diana for Ireland. Johnny Logan for Ireland. Somebody Quinn for Ireland. And I would imagine somebody Martin for Ireland. So perhaps I'm reasonably confident about that because I don't think any of those four look like Irish. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we... Um, time, well, let's give us a little bit of time to think about Leo the Ninth Simeon forming K9. Well, he's a Doctor Who dog. dog. But can, can they all be dogs? They could all be dogs, actually. Fictional dogs. Formic. No, uh, formic, formic acid. acid. Okay, K9. Uh, oh, they're puns. Puns. Oh, uh, Leo 9. Leo, Leo 9. 9 is to do with alliance. Formic is to do with formic ants. Acid, formic acid. Cian is to do with... Uh, yes, uh, yes. And, right, yes. so it's Martin, Dana, Dana Logan, and Quinn. <laughs> 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 That is four points for the groups. I can't leave you to chat. What about the connections? The first blue group starting with Asher, what are they? They are sons of Jacob in the book of Genesis. They are four of Jacob's 12 sons in the Bible. And the green group starting with K2. Oh, they're the second highest mountains on their continent. They're the second highest mountains on their respective continents. Here's Ojos del Salado in the Andes. And where's Dick Tau? I have no idea. Well, Caucasus, the, the second really? highest peak in Europe after... Uh, well, well uh, Mount Elbrus. Uh, Mount Elbrus yes. would be the highest mountain. And the pink group, starting with Logan. We think they're some of the many people who won the Eurovision Song Contest for Ireland. That is absolutely right. Johnny Logan, Dana, born uh, Rosemary Brown, Linda Martin and Amir Quinn, who won in 1996. Wait, Irish what's... winners of Eurovision. And the last group, starting with Leo X, or however you choose to read it. They're puns on um, adjectives describing creatures. So Leonine means like a lion, Leonine. Canine, a dog. Simeon, some kind of like ape. Like ape. ape. Like That's ape. right. And formic, like an ant. That is a perfect answer. They sound like adjectives pertaining to various animals. So, four points for the groups, four points for the connections. You get the bonus two points for getting it all right on this horrible wall. You've scored the maximum ten. Very well done. <laughs> Time to bring back the history boys and give them an equally horrible semi-final connecting wall with 16 new clues and see what they can do about solving it. History boys, you're going to be getting the lion wall because water's been taken. You have two and a half minutes to solve it, starting now. Hephaestus um, of the Hearth, goddess of Hearth, Vulcan. Um, there's lots of painters. There's Cafu, there's Brazilian footballers, Didi, Cafu. Pele, Socrates. Pele, Socrates. Um, what about any of these? Duke Chiang. Could be. Um, Leonardo's a footballer, isn't he? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, um, so, so we've got. Pe uh, Pele's a Hawaiian. Why does it not spell like that? Okay, but Pele and Hephaestus and Vulcan could all be... Oh, Pele's a god of, goddess of fire in Hawaii. Um, yeah, and so is Hephaestus yeah. and so is Vulcan. Agni is the, the Hindu goddess. Okay. Three strikes so and you're out now. Plenty of painters. time. Pullet Capon are uh, both the chickens. What do you think? Uh, broiler is a chicken, so oh, one of the... Two oh, sands. Two chicken. sands. So if we go... Dutcher presumably is a painter. These two? Them. Yeah. That's it. You solved them all. That's it, quick and easy. So you get four points for the groups you found, and I'll give you more points for the connections. Socrates, but I don't know what that sign means. Maybe it's Socrates, Leonardo, Didi, Cafu. It's a Brazilian, Brazilian, football. Brazilian football player. They are Brazilian international footballers. And the next group, starting Peel or Pale or Pele, what's that? These Pele. are um, gods or goddesses related to fire and the hearth and things like That's that. That's right, they are fire deities. You're right that Pele is the Hawaiian goddess of fire or volcanoes. And what about the pink group, Dali, Warhol, Duccio, Tintoretto? These are all painters, I guess, artists. Yeah, um, yeah well, Dali, Warhol, Tintoretto, they're all artists. Are they? yeah. I'm going to need another connection in this semi-final. Uh, oh, they're all, they're all artists who took a name other than their own, maybe? I'm afraid that is not true of all of them. They are all artists who painted The Last Supper. OK. That oh, is the connection. Enough. And the last blue group, Pullet, Capon, Poussin, Broiler. This is 
All types of chicken. All types of chicken. Mm. So that is four points for the groups you found and three points for the connections. Let's have a look at the scores. The History Boys have 12 points. The Jess Men have 21. So a bit of work for you to do, History Boys, but it can be done in round four. There's so many points available. Not least because if the teams make a mistake by so much as one letter, they lose a point. This is the round where we take the vowels out of well-known names, phrases and sayings and squidge up the consonants and ask the teams what are those hidden clues. So fingers on buzzers teams, enunciate with care as I tell you that the first group are all twin towns. History boys. Liverpool and Rio de Janeiro. Correct. Nottingham and Harare? Correct. A very tricky one. It's Aberdeen and Bulawayo. Next clue. History boys. Perth and Perth. Correct. Next category. Words you can type using only the top row on a QWERTY keyboard. History boys. Poetry. Correct. History Boys. Pottery. Correct. History Boys. Typer. I'm afraid not, because that would need a Y. Chessmen, do you know? Yes, yeah, Topa. Topa or outpour is acceptable. Next clue. History Boys. Quiet tea. I'm afraid not. Chessmen, do you know? Equity. Equity is the word. Next category, vowels. History Boys. Soir. An unstressed vowel. Jasmine? Murmur vowel. Also known as a schwa. <laughs> Jasmine? Indeterminate vowel. Also known as a schwa. <laughs> Jasmine? Diphthong. Not a schwa. Next category, Antarctic geography. History Boys. Ross Ice Shelf. Correct. Amundsen C. Correct. History Boys. Mount Erebus. Correct. Well, that is the end of the quiz, and I can tell you that with 27 points and through to the final, it's the chessmen. But after a brave round four and a great performance in the series overall, finishing an honourable second like Scott himself with 18 points, it's the History Boys. Mm. Thanks for coming back. You've been brilliant. It was lovely to see you, and I'm sorry to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Chessmen, many congratulations. You are through to the final. We'll be seeing you again. So, Una Stubbs was having a pint of prawns. I went over and I said, Your Guinness has turned into crustaceans. Well, she screamed, and so I turned to the person next to her who was having the seafood salad. I didn't immediately think of something to say about that, so I went, but we'll be squid, and the matron didn't like it.